a little bit. How are you all? Just waiting for a few more people to log on. Hello. Hope everything is streaming properly and you can hear me. doing all right today hope everyone's feeling fine wherever this may find you this video whenever it finds you all right so welcome 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 Streaming on a couple of platforms, so waiting for you all to get here. Welcome. I'm Aish Nicole, and I'm coming back to you again with another live webinar. Peace. Thank you for joining me. However, you've chosen to join me, whether you came through the website, you came through Facebook, Instagram. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the time out to like, share, subscribe, and get this information out to as many women as possible. Okay? So, this is part two of my webinar series of Holistically Healing Fibroids. And tonight we're going to talk about um, a little bit more about herbs and steaming and how that impacts uterine fibroids. So... Just a recap for those that don't know, I'm sure if you're listening to this, you have an idea of what fibroids are already, but they're benign, non-cancerous tumors that develop in the womb, sometimes on the outside of the womb, sometimes on the actual, the lining or the muscle fibers that are within the, the womb area. So, they basically act like a, a, a dumpster or a trash can for toxins. So the more toxins you have, toxins are just going to feed the fibroids. If the fibroids grow, they create all sorts of dis-ease, discomfort in the body when they grow in this manner. So including heavy cycles, uh, painful intercourse, low back pain, extreme cramping, uh, hemorrhaging, which can lead to anemia, etc. So, we want to get rid of those. There are lots of things, uh, studies that have contributed to fibroids, um, so including a lot of the things that are just in our environment. Hair relaxers, certain fragrances that we wear, uh, oils and uh, lotions with fragrance in them that we put on the um, bodies, non-natural fragrances, let me say that. Um, dairy products, hormonal imbalances, which a lot of people have hormonal imbalances just from eating their regular diets or having too much stress on the liver, which can create hormonal imbalances in the body. Hi, Jess. So, with that being said, we're going to talk about some herbs that can help address some of those things. Um, Killing your fibroids is not a one-step process. It's not just popping a pill, unfortunately. It's not just working out. It's not just um, uh, meditating in the morning or doing yoga. I mean, it's not just taking birth control pills. A lot of people are prescribed birth control pills for their hormonal 
balance and abundance. And for some people, it works. For most people I've talked to, it does not work. It just kind of throws things off and makes it a little bit worse. Um, so, because of uh, estrogen feeds fibroids. So, sometimes you might get prescribed birth control pills to balance out your estrogen that's in the body, but it just doesn't always work. It didn't work for me and many other women that I personally know. We're talking about holistically healing our fibroids, and tonight we're talking about herbs and steaming. Thanks for joining. So, once the one of the first things that um, I like to address with women that come to me that have fibroids or I'm trying to heal them are uh, is the is the blood flow, is the heavy bleeding. Okay, because the heavy bleeding not only does it create a bunch of discomfort in the body and then insecurity about wearing white and being able to leave your home when you're on your cycle and move about fairly normally um it also can create severe anemia severe anemia in a person so with that being said uh -oh. well, we keep it moving the video didn't work um with that being said we want to talk about the things that you can do to control the flow so get your pen paper because there are several things that you have just right, right in your cabinet that might be able to help you control the flow. The first one that I mentioned briefly in the last video is cinnamon. Cinnamon. So you can get the cinnamon in your body however you get it. Whether you sprinkle it on some food and you consume it that way. Or if you choose to take, um, normally how I would do the cinnamon is in hot water. So you get some, uh, put the cinnamon in your cup, pour hot water, and you drink it like it's a tea. Cinnamon tea, you can drink that as well, but I'll just do regular cinnamon. And cinnamon kind of helps slow the blood flow down. It'll help the blood coagulate. If you look at cinnamon once it's been in water for a period of time, it'll start to kind of thicken. Oh, um, and it's, it's going to help stop the flow. Wherever you're bleeding in, in, in the body, it's going to help with that. And cinnamon is very inexpensive, easy to find. You don't have to know an herbalist or anything like that to get cinnamon. Another um, great thing that's very easily accessible to us that's helpful with this is apple cider vinegar. I mean, if you're flowing really heavy and you take some apple cider vinegar and some warm water and drink it, I mean, I've seen it slow things down within 15, 20 minutes right away. Slow the flow because you're already low on iron, you know, if you're dealing with anemia. So you don't want to continue to bleed out every single month. That just makes it worse, makes you feel worse. When you're anemic, you feel low. You don't have a lot of energy. You're tired all the time. You need multiple naps throughout the day. You know, it's just not, it's just not a good look. And some people don't even know that they're anemic. They just think that they're tired or like, oh, I'm out of shape. I need to work out more. That's kind of how I saw my anemia initially, you know. Um, at the time, I lived up steps. So I would, I noticed I'm walking up the stairs and I'm just fatiguing very easily walking up the steps when it didn't bother me before. And it's like, wow, I guess I need to work out more. Which is really the opposite of what you want to do, depending on how severe your anemia is. If it's very low, like mine was at the time, maybe like a six or something, or seven or something like that. Um, the hospital will recommend a blood transfusion because your heart is working harder when your iron is low like that because the the iron the hemoglobin really is what the issue is that carries oxygen throughout your body to the rest of your organs okay so if you are low on hemoglobin the body is going to be working that much harder especially the heart um, so when I first learned about my anemia um, just through a physical, honestly, which everyone should be hopefully getting annual physicals. Um, I was advised that they, they called me right away. Like, hey, you need to go to the hospital like now and get a blood transfusion. Like, well, why, I, why do I need a blood transfusion? Uh, because your blood is so low right now, like you're susceptible to a heart attack. That's what the, that's what the nurse told me on the phone. Um, because your heart is working hard. So don't do any sudden movements. Don't scare yourself. Don't... Um, do any running and jumping, don't get on a roller coaster, anything that can make your heart pound out of your chest, you want to avoid that, okay? You want to do your best to avoid that because um, 
your heart is already under a lot of stress and it's working really hard just to keep you alive and to keep you here, okay? So we want to control the flow so that you're not losing more hemoglobin with each particular cycle and plummeting. And we will, I will talk to you about a few things that you can use to build up your hemoglobin. But back to controlling your flow. So the first thing I said was cinnamon, apple cider vinegar, and this is like um, uh, two tablespoons, a tablespoon or two in a, in a cup of water. Okay, warm water. Drink it. Apple cider vinegar. Um, the next thing that you can use just to kind of relax you and calm your nerves is chamomile. Chamomile is also anti-inflammatory. So I like to use chamomile in my herbal infusions as well as in my, especially in my steams. Um, we'll get back to the steams momentarily, but the herbal infusions, um, when you're drinking the chamomile, will just kind of help calm the body down because the more upset you are, the more tense you are, the more anxious you are, the more anxiety that you're dealing with, the heavier you're gonna flow. Your emotions and your womb are, are, are really connected. It's almost like your womb is the voice of your emotional state and of your emotions. So if you're really emotional, upset, sad, whatever the case may be, then it can impact you. You'll be severely impacted um, by this, by the fibroids. We're still talking about holistically healing fibroids, about the herbs and the steaming. So, apple cider vinegar, cinnamon. Two things that you can just grab at the grocery store, chamomile to kind of keep your anxiety level down as well and calm everything down. The more relaxed you are, the less you're going to flow. If you're in a stressful situation, you know, a high stress moment, traffic, upset, arguing, or anything that's creating a lot of stress, it's going to create more flow. So it's really important to know how to take downtime during your moon time as well. If you're if you're in a position to do so, I know a lot of people have to work and things like that. But if you have an opportunity to take it easy, not work as hard, um, I would definitely advise that. You know, I like to look at this at the moon time. It's like your personal holiday, and you give yourself at least a day or two to just relax, whatever that looks like for you. Okay. Just chill out, relax, drink tea, rest, let your emotions flow, watch tearjerker movies if that's what you want to do, but just relax and chill out, okay? Another great herb that you can use um, that will help control the flow and it's just good for uterine health overall is red raspberry leaf. Love red raspberry leaf. It helps tone the uterus and just strengthen the uterus overall, okay? It soothes cramps. So if you're cramping, it's gonna help soothe that for you. It's really good for the overall reproductive system. But really, really great for, for, for fibroids. It's, got, it's, it's high in iron, so if you're drinking it, it'll also help with that. And you also can steam with it. Everything that I'm speaking to you about, you also can steam with, okay? Those are three of the really good um, herbs that you can drink and steam with. Now, when I'm steaming, I also drink the herbal infusions. Okay? I recommend that you all drink drink the herbs and see how that works for you. Um, the other one I want to talk to you about that is not going to be in the grocery store. You're probably going to have to go to a health food store or order it online. It's called Yarrow. Y-A-R-R-O-W. Yarrow. Yarrow is amazing because it's an adaptogen herb. So, it's it's going to address you where you need to be addressed. For example, if you're bleeding really heavily, and this is any type of bleeding in the body, you can drink yarrow, you can take it in a tincture. Um, it comes in a herbal, you know, just a loose herb form. I've seen it in some teas um, or in a tincture. Normally I see a tincture or just the raw herb. So if you do the raw herb, you can take it, put it in a tea bag, you know, boil some warm, some hot water. Pour it over there, steep for five minutes and drink it. And it will also really help slow down the flow or stop it really, okay? Uh, Yarrow's been used for many, many years like in hospitals for hemorrhaging. If someone was hemorrhaging for whatever reason during childbirth or if they hurt themselves, it's great for that. Yarrow is magical though because it's also um, used to help bring your cycle on if your cycle has been missing. 
So there's sometimes some women may want to control their cycle. Um, you know, you know, you've got something that you're going to be doing next week and your cycle is due at that time. and You don't want it to come. You want it to come a little early. Yarrow is one of those good things to drink that will help assist your cycle come um, early. I would not recommend drinking yarrow prior to your cycle coming if you have a short cycle. Okay, so say your cycle is 21 days or 20 days. That's kind of considered somewhat of a short cycle. I would not drink the yarrow until I actually started flowing because you don't want it to bring it down any earlier. If you have a short cycle anyway, you want to get as long in between each cycle as possible to give your body a chance to rebuild your, uh, build your blood during that time. So if you can get to 28 days, that's ideal, you know. Um, now that's not everyone's cycle. Some people have a natural 26 day cycle, 25 day cycle, but the point that I'm making with it is I would avoid Yara altogether prior to my cycle starting if I'm not trying to make it come down early. Now, once you start flowing, cool, drink the yarrow. These herbs work really great synergistically, meaning they work really well together. So if you're just trying to use them together, like get yourself a tea bag, put all of them in there together, drink them, you know, and it's a nice little concoction right there. And the last one um, that I'm just going to mention, because there are several herbs like that you can use to treat fibroids. These are just some of my favorites and the ones that work for me. Okay? Shepherd's Purse. Shepherd's Purse. Shepherd's Purse. This is another one that I have, you're not going to find at the grocery store. You're going to have to go to an herb store or specialty shop of some sort or um, order it online. You can find it in a tincture or you can find the loose herb itself. I like the loose herbs. Tinctures are extracts, basically where they've taken the herbs and they've soaked them and um, you know got all the uh, all of the good stuff out of the herb and you, you end up with a little jar and it's inside of an oil. But I, if I can go straight to the, the plant itself, I always will choose to go straight to the plant. Tinctures are convenient. Um, they're great if you're on the move or, or if you just don't have time to drink tea all day or you just don't like tea. Tinctures are, are, are really convenient. Um, but I find that the actual herb itself is more potent. So um, if you're addressing this aggressively, I want to address it as aggressively as possible, then we want to go ahead and, and deal with the raw herb, okay? So just to recap, the herbs that will help you control your flow Cinnamon, Shepherd's Purse, Red Raspberry Leaf. This is different than the Raspberry Zinger Tea. Okay, it's specifically the leaf. It's not necessarily the berry. Okay, I just want to um, emphasize that. It's called Red Raspberry Leaf. It's the, it's the berry. Okay. Yarrow. And you also can use uh, apple cider vinegar. And I said chamomile as well. Okay. Now, the thing, some of the things that can help you with uh, shrinking the fibroids. One that's um, pretty... Mm, again, I don't know how accessible this is. Because these are, now we're moving into the herbalist. You know, you have to go to a health food store, to a herbalist. And when I say a health food store, I don't mean like the vitamin shop or a vitamin store. Like a place that sells herbs. Okay? We'll order them online. Pau Diarco. P-A-U. Second word D. Third word Arco. A-R-C-O. It's an anti-tumor herb altogether. So it's really good for any type of tumors or growths in the body because it helps to shrink them. It helps to shrink them, reduce the fibroids. Some fibroids can't be passed depending on where they're located in your body. If it's in the in the canal itself, yeah, your body could pass those out through, you know, like you're having a baby. But if it's not in the canal, sometimes they're in the lining or in the muscle. Those have to be shrank. You're not going to pass it. Sometimes it's on the outside of the uterus. That has to be shrank. You have to dissolve those. 
So Pau Diarco is really great for that. It's also antioxidant and it's anti-inflammatory. Anything that you can do to reduce the amount of inflammation in the body is going to be helpful overall. Not just for fibroids, but just for your overall health. You know, we want to reduce as much inflammation in the body as possible. So I'm constantly trying to take things that um, are anti-inflammatory. Like I mentioned chamomile earlier. It's exceptional for that. Pau Diarco is another anti-inflammatory herb that you can mix up and put in your little concoction that's there. Okay? Red clover. Red clover is another herb that you can get at the herb store that will assist you with shrinking your fibroids. It also is really good um, for PMS. For those that are dealing with PMS, it kind of helps with that. Helps with circulation. It's good. It has. It's, it helps with the iron as well. Okay. I'm kind of moving a little slow so that you have time to write these things down, um, take them in, and see what works for you. Everyone that has fibroids doesn't deal with the same symptoms. Everyone that has fibroids is not dealing with heavy cycles. You know, if the fibroid is not located in the uterine canal and it's a nice big size, you might not have heavy cycles. Everyone that has fibroids doesn't have anemia. You know, it really is a, um, a individualized prescription. I mean, there are some general things that occur, but for the most part, it's, you know, it can vary from person to person. But these will all work for everyone. Okay. Some herbs to help with hormonal balance. One of them is um one of the really good ones is chaseberry or vitex. That's the other name for it. Another herb you're gonna have to get at a health food store, like a herb store. You can also get in a, in a tincture, or they like look like little bitty balls, like little um like little pellets. They're little bitty balls. And you drink those and steep them the exact same way that you would steep regular herbs, the, uh, all the other things. You can drink it like a tea. You can put it in your little concoction or your little tea ball and work it out. Steam it, steep it, and drink it, and it will work really well for you. It's um, really good for just balancing out high estrogen, you know, by making sure you get enough progesterone to balance that out really good to help regulate your cycle. One of the negative things about the uh, the fibroids is, um, you know, your cycle might just come early. It can come at a time, at an inopportune time. It's doing whatever the hell it wants to do. The fibroids are in control. You can get upset and get emotional and bring your cycle down. Okay? So, um, chase bearing is going to help regulate the menses as well. It also will help with um, dissolving the fibroids. Okay, really good for people that have lumpy breasts as well. Like um, if you feel your breasts and they feel lumpy, fibrocystic breast, it helps with that as well. And this is one that's good for fertility too, if you were trying to conceive. Another one of the, and I'm not going to talk about all of the herbs again. I'm just going to give you a few, you know, just to get you started on your journey. If you want to learn more, you can reach out to me on my site for a consultation. I am doing complimentary consultations with people um, to see if, um, if, the, if what it is that I have to offer can help you, you know. I want to see as many of us heal as possible. I have a group on Facebook. If you're on there or not familiar with it, it's called Heal the Woman, Heal the World. That one is specifically for women, but it is about um, because the woman is the is the the foundation really, you know, of the household. The first person to deal with the children, you know, to deal with your mates. Um, women are just like the backbone of this society. So, and a lot of us need healing. A lot of us are not well. More than not, honestly, the majority in America, women just you know they're not well. Even though we have more opportunities now, even though women are doing more in the world or in more positions of power, moving and shaking, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, where um, our wounds are not well, we're not really healthy. 
internally and we're often not healthy internally because we're not happy so sit with that too take that little tidbit down where in what area of your life are you unhappy if you're dealing with fibroids especially and even the people that don't have fibroids hell you want to prevent them from coming so be mindful of how you're living your life ladies be mindful of the things that bring you joy go in the path that feels good Choose the path of least resistance whenever you can and the path of joy. Because you can't really go wrong. There's so many good, happy endorphins and hormones and everything else that will come out when you're just simply a happy person. And a lot of us aren't happy. We're medicating with all sorts of different things. Sex, clothes, uh, outfits, <laughs> shoes. But at the end of the day, those things are, if they're bringing you joy, that's great. But if you have all those things, have all the shoes your closet can fill, you go to all the hottest events, you take trips all of the time, you've got a closet full of nice clothing, you know everybody. But at the end of the day, when you crawl in your bed at night, you're still crying. You know, your heart is still not happy. You're still feeling unfulfilled. Then you're going to have to go a little bit deeper. Those physical things are not bringing you joy, unfortunately. Okay, so be mindful of that too. Check your joy meter. What's your joy meter today? Energetically, how do you feel? Check in with yourself right now, energetically, and just ask, hey, how do I feel? On my joy meter, am I from a 1 to 10, where am I on my joy meter? Am I a 10? Am I a 2? Am I a 1? Am I a 5? Only you know the answers to these questions. So, herbal infusions. Okay? Drinking the herbal infusions to help control the fibroids. We're, we're, so we're focusing on the ones for hormonal balance, the ones to slow down the menses, to keep the flow from coming as heavily, and the ones that will help with anemia that are high in iron so i already mentioned that um red raspberry is is good for the anemia an exceptional um one of my favorites is sea moss now sea moss is not a herb it's actually like a sea moss i guess i don't know i don't think it's a form of a sea seaweed maybe, maybe it's part of the seaweed family but sea moss you, it comes from the ocean you can either purchase the sea moss in a gel where it's already congealed and you just take a, taste, a tablespoon of it, you put it in your food, you can put it in your smoothies, however you want to do it, um, or you can make the gel yourself. When um, I, There's all kind of recipes out here to teach you how to make sea moss gel. Or you can purchase the tablets. For some people, it's more convenient to take the supplements. Again, I prefer to go to the raw plant whenever possible. But if you don't have time, you're not making smoothies in the morning, you don't want to take a tablespoon of it, just do what's convenient for you. Something is better than nothing. Okay? Something is better than nothing. And be gentle with yourselves. You start where you are. So you might not start all these things all at once, but one is better than none. Okay? Sea moss is really good for helping build the iron, especially if you can find a product that has sea moss and bladderwrack in it simultaneously. Exceptional. A lot of people can't take iron pills. The fair sulfate that they might prescribe you at the doctor you could buy over the counter. Um, it tears people's stomachs up. Also can constipate you. So often when you're taking iron pills, you also have to take um, some sort of a, like, I hate to say a laxative, but a stool softener, something to help soften the stool. Essence of Vitality is an exceptional product. Um, I believe they might have some on Amazon, but just Google Essence of Vitality. It's just good for just digestion and everything overall. So just taking a couple of those capsules if you're taking iron pills will help. Now, you can also take liquid iron, like Gaia, makes a nice liquid iron that you can take. It's plant-based. It's a lot more gentle on the body. Easier for you to digest. Fair sulfate is coming from like iron, um, earth-based iron. This is plant-based iron that's going to come in the liquid. Okay? 
I know the one that I take personally is Gaia. G-A-I. Gaia. G-A-I-A. Gaia means earth. And they make a liquid iron. And it's gentle. Like even if you took it and didn't have any food, it's not going to make you feel terrible. Okay? You guys still with me? Awesome. So, iron building. We said sea moss. We said the liquid iron by Gaia. Bladderack. Black strap molasses. It's the last one I'll talk about. Now, I don't know if you guys remember like your grandmother or somebody taking black strap molasses. But it's really thick. Um... I don't like the way it tastes. Some people like it, but whatever. This isn't about taste and flavor. This is about healing. So we get over our taste buds at a certain point, you know. Um, Blackstrap molasses. You, I just personally would take two tablespoons. I just take put it on a tablespoon. I know some people that mix it in their tea or coffee. Now, coffee. I like coffee. But so your fibroids don't like coffee. Okay. <laughs> your womb doesn't like the coffee so if you're a coffee drinker I strongly suggest that you cut back or stop drinking coffee at least while you're on your cycle like a day or two or definitely the day before your cycle and during your cycle I wouldn't drink coffee because it really just creates more cramping if you've already got like digestive issues it just makes everything worse and it makes a lot more pain it can make you um, uh, flow really heavily okay so, no coffee during the cycle. And I like coffee, again. It's a fun recreational drink and gives you a little pep in your step. But that caffeine, mm -mm, it's not your friend. It's not your womb's friend. Okay? So, those are just a few little herbs. Steaming. What is steaming? Well, it's really old. For those of you who don't know, it's, it's called V-steaming, vaginal steaming, yoni steaming, and some of the um, uh, gym bangs or the Korean spas, they may call it a hip bath. And it's the process of um, sitting over a, a, a warm pot of herbs with warm water, and it's creating steam that's going to go up and through the vaginal canal that your body is going to absorb. It's going to go into the womb and help heal whatever things you got going on in there okay so you there are plenty of places now steaming has become a lot more popular than it was I mean but it's very old most traditions cultures like um, in Africa and China and um, uh, Korea the Japanese would steam um, Native Americans a lot of times people would steam after they had their children um, for the afterbirth People will steam for fertility. People steam after their cycles just for overall freshness, you know, and just feel good. It's very relaxing as well. And depending on what you steam with, well, um, it can have different medicinal properties. So steaming for fibroids, you can use every herb that I described earlier today, with the exception of the apple cider vinegar. It's not really a herb, but red raspberry leaf, you know, the chase berry or the vitex the shepherd's purse pile the arco excellent for steaming okay i have a video on my website underneath the blog tab that shows you how to make your own little steam throne at home um there's several ways you can do it there's some companies that sell steam boxes that you can sit on and steam there are other companies that um but if you don't have that if you don't have anything fancy that's fine you can just get yourself a nice big bowl like a metal bowl preferably and kind of squat over the bowl you can put take get a really large bowl lift your commode and set it down on the inside of the toilet put your toilet seat down so make sure it's big enough to actually sit there okay Put your herbs in there, pour your hot water there, and then you just sit down like you're just sitting on the toilet and you steam there. That's probably the easiest way to steam if you don't have some sort of a steaming thing. But you can look on the on my website, AishaNicole.com, and look under the blogs tab, and there underneath womb wellness, there is like a little short video on how you can kind of 
have make yourself a little um, at home steam okay how often do you want to steam well if you're dealing with fibroids in my from on my journey I steamed every week with the exception of during my cycle now if you're not dealing with fibroids it's perfectly okay um, to steam on your cycle but the steam is increasing the circulation in the womb making more blood flow and people with fibroids really want to control their blood flow so even though it's relaxing and it feels really good to steam during your cycle um, if you do choose to do so I would limit the time and not do it more than like 10 minutes but women with fibroids shouldn't be steaming longer than 20 minutes anyway okay and you can steam for a bunch of reasons. People steam for fertility. They steam for endometriosis. They steam for PCOS. You can steam if you've got bacteria vaginosis or yeast infection or something. People steam for a variety of reasons. But we're talking about fibroids today and holistically healing your fibroids. So um, on my 90-day journey or about the time that it took for my fibroids to abort themselves, I was steaming weekly. Okay? With the exception of... Um, during the cycle. You can make these steams at home. I also sell a fibroid free steam on AishaNicole.com. So you can log on there or you can make your own. This is about getting the information out. You know, I just want to see women heal however you need to do it. So if you like to do that type of thing and go out and get herbs and mix them up for yourself, hey, have at it. That's fun. If you don't have time for that, it's already done for you. Just get it done. Or you can go to a steaming facility. Go to a Yoni steaming place in your town. Google V Steam or Yoni Steam. You might enjoy the treatment overall because it can be relaxing. And when you set up your steam, make sure it's that. That's your time, your sacred time to connect with your womb. So make sure that there aren't people around coming in and out, children or people bothering you, um, your mate around, like, you, that's why it's really nice if you can do it in your restroom or if you can set up some sort of a sacred space in your house. Um, light your candles, you know, put nice music on that may make you feel relaxed and just sit down and, and steam and relax. And treat it, it's like a spa treatment, really, and treat it as such. Treat it like a relaxing spa treatment. Don't want to die on you guys, my bad. Um, so steaming on a regular basis is going to help it really was instrumental on my journey okay I am going to be doing another live on Sunday to give you even more information about this journey of healing your fibroids because again it's not it's not just one thing it's not just one thing that made them come <laughs> you know so it's not just going to be one thing that makes them go away unfortunately but if you can get this medley of things going and make them a regular part of your lifestyle because it's really lifestyle changes that generally have to take place for this healing to happen as well um, your lifestyle has gotten to a certain place and your body is is rebelling against it and really crying and screaming for your attention. That's really what the womb is doing. So get to know the voice of your womb. If you feel something, feel you're walking into a building or going around a person and you feel a jump or feel something in your womb that feels like pain, pay attention to that. Little phantom pains that occur in the body are, are not just phantom pains that occur in the body. Everything in your body happens for a reason. Our bodies are always talking to us. You Even on your face, this part of the face represents the reproductive system. So if all of a sudden you start getting a lot of breakouts in this area, moles out of nowhere start popping up, excessive hair growth or something it's going to let you know something's going on with you in the reproductive system another way that you know something's going on internally um like say you have hormonal imbalance you'll start to get breakouts through the jawline underneath the jaw like they would call them period bumps and things like that 
a lot of times they may come through the jawline that's because of the hormones that are kind of fluctuating throughout the month but if that's going on on an ongoing basis so you start growing excessive hair or something like that out of nowhere then that's letting you your body is letting you know that your hormones are off and you need to find out what area they're off these bodies they are magical how they work synergistically excuse me one second here guys I just didn't want the stream to cut off right in the middle on you there, so I had to plug up. So uh, forgive me for that. But these bodies, they work together. They're always working. They're always working to communicate to us to let us know what's going on. Okay? Through your, your face is a map of the body. Your scalp is a map of the body. Your ears have a map of the body. Your hands and your feet. Okay? always talking your body is always talking to you so pay attention when changes occur on your body we're so busy we're so busy and um, there's just so much noise going on all the time you know we don't pay attention to our bodies the little you feel a little sharp a little pain here or a little crick there or something like that we just go you know pop a pill and keep it moving but that's your that's like your little siren your little warning signal if the alarm goes off on your car you'll pay attention to it you'll run outside and look around hey what's going on what's going on what's you doing to my car what's going on but our bodies sound the alarm on a regular basis and we just like la la whatever so start listening to your body and pay attention to it okay so, does anyone have any questions in the meantime that I can answer while I'm here on this live? Nope. Well, that is all I have for you all tonight. Okay? Again, if you are interested in learning more about how you can help yourself, please visit my website, AishaNicole.com, www.ashianicole.com, AishaNicole.com. I'll put a link. I have a link in my link tree. I'll put a link in the description so you can see it. Look under services and you can schedule yourself a complimentary consultation. And I can let you know if I have something that can help you or give you some more information or refer you someplace else if that's necessary, okay? I thank you so much for tuning in. Please share this information. I hope it was helpful to you. Um, and tune back in for the next complimentary webinar on part three of Holistically Healing Your Fibroids. In the meantime, you all have an amazing evening. Take care of yourselves. Love yourselves. Be gentle with yourselves. Be patient with the process. And just know that you will heal if it's your will. Thanks for tuning in.